Hello, NASA Administrator Charles Bolden here. Thank you for inviting me to your gathering. I'm really sorry I couldn't be there in person. I had a wonderful time when I traveled to Israel for the Alain Ramon Symposium this past January. The spirit of exploration that Alain and his colleagues exemplified on their mission 10 years ago is alive and well today. Together with American industry, we're developing the space transportation systems of the future to reach low Earth orbit. Teaming with our international partners, we're striving to reach farther destinations such as an asteroid in Mars. Our science missions continue to spread across the solar system, observe our home planet, and peer beyond our neighborhood. And our aeronautics technology work is transforming our air transportation system. As one who lost friends and colleagues aboard both Challenger and Columbia, I can only say that while time cannot mend that loss, we can honor our brave friend's memory as we are doing here today by continuing to strive for a stronger future and working together as partners in a global exploration enterprise. I'm delighted that you have designated 2013 as Space Year. It's been a great year for NASA and for global exploration. Last month, we issued a global exploration roadmap reflecting the work of 12 space agencies that makes clear the U.S. and its international space partners share a common interest in pursuing ambitious space exploration goals. The roadmap represents the global community working together on a unified deep space exploration plan with robotic and human missions to destinations that include near-Earth asteroids, the Moon, and Mars. Zero ignition and liftoff of Amazon. NASA's latest mission to the moon, LADEE, launched September 6th. It will provide unprecedented information about the moon's evolution and give scientists a better understanding of other planetary bodies. There's something intrinsically unifying about the humankind's exploration of the heavens. Beyond the scientific and economic benefits of launching into space, I can tell you that when viewed from orbit, our borderless Earth inspires a sense of humility, unity of humanity, and wonder. Let me tell you, along with our international partners, we're pursuing the big ideas of exploration with passion and dedication and bringing about a new era. In science, it's been a little more than a year since the Mars rover Curiosity safely landed on Mars after a harrowing journey and it has already been returning amazing data. We're preparing to launch MAVEN this fall to study the Martian atmosphere. NASA also has narrowed to four the number of potential landing sites for InSight, the agency's 2016 mission to the surface of Mars, from where it will study the planet's interior. Few research products are as valuable as an accurate understanding of the future of the climate, and NASA is working to complete and launch three new Earth science missions in 2014, which I'm calling the Year of the Earth. The Wide Field Infrared Survey Explorer, or WISE, will be revived this month with the goal of discovering and characterizing near-Earth objects, the space rocks that can be found orbiting within 45 million kilometers from Earth's path. We also have spacecraft speeding to Jupiter and Pluto and peering beyond our solar system and we're readying the James Webb Space Telescope for its 2018 launch as the successor to Hubble. I was the pilot on the space shuttle mission that deployed Hubble in 1990, and I'm delighted that we have come far enough to be able to soon deploy this amazing new telescope, which will see even farther into the cosmos. Some members of our international crew aboard the International Space Station returned to Earth this week and the crew will be back to full complement when another group of astronauts launches for the station September 25th. The station is our home in space. The research on human health we perform there and the technology demonstrations it makes possible are helping us to reach for farther destinations such as an asteroid in Mars. In 2015, an astronaut and a cosmonaut launched to the station for a one-year mission while NASA is focused on human missions to places no one has ever gone before, we're handing over transport to the station and other low Earth orbit destinations to private American companies. SpaceX has now completed two contracted cargo resupply missions to the International Space Station. Commercial cargo resupply capability is real. Next week, 
Orbital Sciences will launch its Antares rocket, carrying a Cygnus spacecraft on a demonstration mission to the station. And later, it will join SpaceX in contracted cargo resupply missions. And we're also making progress toward launching astronauts from American shores again by 2017. We have just welcomed a new class of astronaut candidates, half of them women, and they have begun their training in Houston for missions that could include commercial rockets to the station and a mission to an asteroid in the 2020s. I remember the day I got the call that I had been accepted to the astronaut corps. It changed my life. I couldn't be more proud of this diverse and accomplished group, which will carry on the deep and proud legacy of human exploration in space, so strongly exemplified by Alain Ramon. NASA has achieved a major milestone in its effort to build the nation's next heavy lift launch vehicle that will take our astronauts farther by successfully completing the Space Launch System, or SLS, preliminary design review. This review concluded the design, production, and ground support plans for the system are capable of fulfilling the launch vehicle's objectives. The SLS rocket will launch us to new destinations, such as an asteroid Mars. Orion, the crew vehicle that will carry our astronauts to deep space, will have its first test flight next year on a mission to simulate re-entry from a lunar mission. The LADEE mission we just launched carries a laser communication system that will demonstrate new technologies we'll need to erase the time lag for communicating with deep space missions such as those that will fly to space on the SLS. Which brings me to one of the most exciting things NASA is working on today. The mission I mentioned to capture and bring an asteroid closer to Earth so that astronauts can visit it. This entire initiative, not just the mission to an asteroid, is a broad concept that touches on activities across the agency and holds great potential for many different types of people outside NASA and around the world to contribute to the journey. We recently made a selection from ideas we solicited about various aspects of our asteroid initiative, and we're holding a workshop at the end of the month to discuss the best of them. Those of you here today who are studying science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, I want you to know that the possibilities for your future are diverse and exciting. I've only touched on a few of the things on which NASA is working. In conjunction with our international partners, there are many, many more. The future will bring us greater capabilities to explore and to make discoveries that we can barely dream about today. To those of you already joining me in our global exploration enterprise, I thank you for the passion and dedication and hard work it takes to pursue this challenging but rewarding field. All of us are raising the bar of human potential and improving life for people across the globe. I hope Researchers' Night sparks productive dialogue and plants the seeds for many future explorers to pursue their dreams. Thank you.